We're gathering specimens and befriending bears. That's right, it's botany from Duxonium. In this plant picking points party, two to five players take on the role of botanists and amateur plant hunters. Over a series of turns, they'll traverse the world map, gathering specimens and acquiring helpful items and crew members. The player whose estate garden is the most prestigious wins the game. Setup begins with the game board placed center. The game board features a map of the world, which includes spaces labeled with a name, region, and type, either a land or sea space. These spaces are connected by routes, either by land or by sea. There's also a reputation track and spaces for various cards. Shovel the expedition deck and set it face down on the top right of the board, then reveal three expedition cards and place them on the spaces to the right. Shovel the event cards and create a face down draw deck, placing it on the board. Do the same with the specimen cards. Next, shuffle the bonus deck cards and reveal three next to the board. These are the three end game scoring bonuses for your game. Return the rest of the bonus cards to the box. Then create a supply of coins near the board along with stacks of the following cards. Orangery, Conservatory, Poisonous Path, and Extra Wardian Cases. Each player then takes an estate board with spaces for estate income, garden features, live specimens, and pressed specimens, one wardian case card, one botanical press card, one randomly dealt character card which provides a roll bonus during the game and a special ability, 10 coins placed near their board. These funds are known as expedition funds, two pawns of the same type, one placed on the estate space of the map and another on the first space of the reputation track. Two expedition cards dealt randomly from the top of the expedition deck. These are placed face up in a player's personal area. Expedition cards come in three types, items, crew, and pets. Like this pig here, who I've named Gretchen Oinkmeyer. And finally, four specimen cards to their personal hand. Once during this setup, each player may discard any number of cards and draw back up to the hand limit of four. If a player has an ability or card that increases their hand limit, they may draw up to that many cards instead. Specimen cards have a name, point value, location, and sometimes an effect. Players then each roll the dice to determine the first player, and now setup for botany is complete. Gameplay occurs in turns, beginning with the first player and proceeding clockwise. On their turn, the active player proceeds through a series of steps. First, they pay one coin from their expedition funds. Then the player may optionally draw an event card. Standard event cards have a name, a roll type, these come in five different attribute options, agility, charm, cleverness, fortitude, and prowess. A location type, either land or sea, story text, and the outcomes of the roll results. After reading the text, the active player rolls one die and adds the result to any bonuses from their character card and expedition cards. Resolve the effects based on this result. Some event cards are world event cards and affect all players, starting with the active player and proceeding clockwise. The active player then moves their location pawn up to three spaces on the board. On each space they move through or land on, they may play any number of specimens from their hand matching those locations. This is known as acquiring a specimen, and the player can play a specimen to one of two locations, either to their wardian case, where it will be preserved for its full point value, or the botanical press, where it's converted into one point for the endgame. When placing a specimen in their wardian case, the specimen is played face up. If the specimen has an effect when acquired, or while it's in the case, it occurs now, or is possibly ongoing while it's in there. Each player has a limit of three specimens per wardian case, and two cases per player max. Some cards might increase this amount, such as the pack mule, who I've named Raphael Johnson. If a player ever wants to add a plant to a full case, they can move one of the specimens to the botanical press and replace it with the new specimen. 
When placing a specimen in the botanical press, the card is placed face down and will be worth one point in the end game rather than its standard point value. There are no limits to the amount of specimens that can be played to the botanical press. One important note. The first time on their turn, when a player acquires a specimen, if they chose not to draw an event card yet, they must do so now. A player only resolves one event per turn and must do it when they acquire a specimen, no matter where they place it. Once a player is finished moving and acquiring specimens, they then draw cards from the specimen deck up to their hand limit. They then gain estate income according to their location on the reputation tracker. This money is placed in their estate income space and is not accessible in their expedition funds yet. Retirement, baby. You guys putting in your 401k? Before ending their turn, the player can buy one card. While traveling around the world, they can buy one expedition card from the three face-up options, paying the coins listed and placing the card in their personal play area. They can also pay two coins to draw and keep the top card of the expedition draw deck. And that's the turn structure. Some other important mechanics of the game? During the first step of their turn, when paying one coin from their expedition funds, if a player cannot afford this cost, they are forced to spend their movement heading back to the estate space. Additionally, they must discard a card, either a specimen from their press or wardian case, or an expedition card of any type. If they cannot discard a card, they must pay two coins from their estate income. If their income is empty, they then lose one reputation. So get back to the estate and stop bleeding all your funds. The estate space is super important. Once a player has acquired some specimens, they need to return to their estate to deposit them in their gardens. This is also the time to gain that estate income and purchase upgrades to their home. When moving to the estate, a player's movement ends for the turn and they take the following steps. Deposit live specimens from their wardian case to the live specimen section of their estate board. These will remain face up. They then gain one coin for each live specimen deposited this turn. They also gain one reputation point per three live specimens deposited this turn. Next, they deposit pressed specimens into their space face down from the botanical press. These don't count for income or reputation right now, but will be worth one point each in the end game. They then retrieve their estate income, including any income gained this turn, and add it to their expedition funds. They can then cycle specimen cards by discarding any cards from their hand and drawing back up to their hand limit. Optionally, they can discard one face-up expedition card from the board and replace it with one from the top of the deck. Finally, when buying a card for the turn, they can purchase an expedition card or a second wardian case, or they can purchase one garden feature, which provides reputation points and choice aesthetics. Poisonous plants can be found in the wild and have negative points. Of course, your instinct is to press these for the positive point, but there's a strategic option for keeping them alive. First off, the garden feature, Poisonous Path, provides positive points for these specimens. Secondly, these specimens can be planted in other players' gardens as a sabotage. <laughs> Your garden won't be as beautiful as mine. When in the estate space and depositing their live specimens, the active player may pay one coin to plant one in an opposing player's garden. These generally can't be moved out of a garden unless a card or ability allows it. Brutal. And that's the major mechanics of the game. Turns continue until the end game is triggered by one player reaching the 12th space on the reputation track. The game can also end if the specimen deck and discard piles are depleted. Once the end game is triggered, the active player finishes their turn and each other player gets one more turn. To tabulate the scores, distribute the three bonus cards to the players who achieve their goals. Ties award the points to all tied players. Add these points to the live specimen points, one point per press specimen, and points from garden features. The player with the most total points wins the game. In the case of a tie, the player with the most coins wins. And that's the basics of botany. I'm Becca Scott, this is Good Time Society, and you need more plants in your home. Seriously, the oxygen is great, the greenery brings some life to the room, and they make really good friends. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and come on back for more great games and good times.